All right, now we're going to kind of look at why use Blender in the first place. Okay. So let's uh, wipe out all we have. By hitting X, you can actually delete everything uh, that is highlighted in object mode. So let's add a mesh cube. And this time we're going to look at something a little bit different. We're going to take the top of this cube, go to face, and hit uh, Control E, which is extrude. Then I'm just going to left click to confirm it. Again, bottom, Control E, extrude. All right, to subdivide it up a little bit, we can go into this panel right over here. Okay, and add a modifier. So this is the same effect in ZBrush. When I go to multi-resolution, I can hit apply subdivide. Notice that it won't let me do it in edit mode. So I have to tab to object mode and hit subdivide. Okay, I'm going to do something and I'm going to transverse another program here. Let's go to Maya for example. You can do this in 3D Studio Max too. Now I'm not going to walk you through Maya. It's just going to take the same polygon box. Face extrude. Extrude. And then I'll just go in here to uh, polygons mesh smooth. Okay, well, here's the difference between Blender and Maya. So we do have the ability to sculpt geometry here in Maya. I will not take away from that fact. Okay, We do have different modifiers. In fact, that we can like move, pinch, pull, vertices. And we can even use symmetry, believe it or not. So in here we can go to stroke, and turn on X symmetry. So a reflection it's called here. And B on the keyboard allows you to make these brush points just a little bit smaller. You gotta hit B, click and drag with the left mouse button. Okay, and then we can move big points or small points or lots of points just by going like this. And I say like this very loosely in the fact that it very it varies okay it has a hard time half the time moving geometry around in Maya it's not very loose it's very strict and yeah it's very cumbersome so if I wanna push pull or whatever now there's something a little bit da daunting here so wait a minute that yeah, should be changing a little bit. Oh, there it is. See? Now it worked. <laughs> but it's not very accurate. I would say it's kind of like using a nuclear weapon on your neighbor. So, that's that. Practice with it. I've never been really too happy with it at all together. Now, in Blender, get five on the number pad to get into an orthographic and we can get one, three, five, and seven to switch between different orthographics based upon five being off or on. On, it'll say front perspective. Okay, so this is just a perspective of front. We want orthographic, so we hit five. Ortho. One, three, and seven. That's pretty quick. So if we hit one, we automatically got X symmetry. Let's go into three, which is Y symmetry. And let's go into this sculpt tool, sculpt mode. I like turning the geometry's wireframe on so I can see it. And then click here to go to grab. Again, that same thing on your keyboard, this thing, or not on the keyboard, but Wacon Drawing Tablet, allows you to change the size of this. 
All right, so we're going to just move this around and check that out. Ooh, that's pretty easy. Now we can go to Symmetry and turn on Symmetry X. Okay, now I can go like that and it changes that form. Well, what's this mean? Well, I can change this form to anything, really. I can sculpt it around, move it around at a very low level, and work out different shapes. I'll work out a shape that's just kind of interesting to look at and fun to sculpt on. We'll treat this as maybe an armor piece for a character. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now if I hit tab, it'll change back to a box. Okay, So I want to keep this form. How do I do that? I can go to object mode and keep it, but anytime I go back into tab, to edit the components it'll change back to a box. Well that's very simple we go over to the modifier and then we can either apply base and it changes to the rudimentary form of that or if I want to keep this as my highest piece I can hit apply. Okay good. So let's change the shape up just a little bit here. Again you can develop your own shape very quickly. Control E, right click, and then R allows you to do this. E, R, W, move that down. Good. And I'm just inserting some edge loops in here just to keep this uniformity. So I'm going to keep with this shape right here and see what I can do with just this shape. So that's your whole mission is to create the underlying geometry to be able to sculpt on. Remember that. How are you going to keep it having crisp edges and how you're going to keep it from not folding in on itself is where you place edge loops where you can place edge loops you know just remember that if I do a control R in this area and put an edge loop very tight here when I subdivide it in ZBrush it'll subdivide and keep its shape in that area but you're also going to have resolution issues sometimes if you do this all over your mesh so you should probably only do that in areas that you really want tight and we can always take those out later. Okay, I might do that to the very bottom as far as uh, add an edge loop in here. So, just switching W E R on the keyboard here. I can also hit control E and do the very same thing without inserting an edge loop. If we want to see what this looks like in ZBrush, we can just simply add a, a multi-res in object mode and hit subdivide to see what it looks like. You can see that it's smooth all over except for this crease. Again, ways to rectify that, maybe you don't want it smooth all over, you can add individual edge loops to certain areas and that will make it so it's crisp in those areas. Case in point, if I put an edge loop in here, very tight against this. and then go in here and add a modifier 
and then subdivide it, you're going to find out that that has a whole different shape. Now it has a very high crease value right here. Okay, let's undo that. Let's just export this shape and see what we can do. Okay, in the next video we'll go into the actual ZBrush. Uh, for right now, also I want to go into Maya and stress that if I wanted that very same shape and I didn't want to use the sculpting tools that kind of suck, I could go in here to like animation. I can create a lattice deformer and say maybe three, 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 and three and hit apply. Okay. And these lattice points would allow me to do that very same thing. I can go in here and try to sculpt, but you notice how the exactness is. I don't have that free will of going in and just kind of touching the mesh and sculpting it. So that concept level right there is missing. And it's that concept that brings creativity. So you're making very exact forms here. And you can turn on the wireframe on shaded just by going into here. So that's the difference between like using a Maya and Blender and the fact that I have those sculpt tools available at any one time. Any one time I could just go into sculpt mode and then I can now uh, change these up, reshape it, maybe put it here and get that underlying form down pat before I go into ZBrush and add detail. Alright, let's go in the next video.